Hello, Tim Wilmot here, and welcome to another watercolour demonstration, taking you through from start to finish my complete painting process. This is actually a recording of a live demo that I recently ran for my Patreons. Just go to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. If you don't know anything about Patreon, think of it as a club, really. A little club that I run for watercolour enthusiasts all around the world. And every month we participate in a, a project set by me, preempted by a live demo, of which this, this is the, the current live demo for March 2022. So take a look at patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot for more information. And also please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. But here we are, uh, take you through the demo, and the subject is a Plaza de Oriente in central Madrid. Hopefully I pronounced that okay for my Spanish viewers. Apologies if I mispronounced that. But a lovely, pretty park scene with some reflections on a very nice fountain um, on the side of the park. So hope you like it, and please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and turn on your notifications. Love to hear your comments and feedback. Thanks very much. On to the demo. Welcome to my live demo and Patreon project for March 2022. So this, of course, is a live demo for, the, for those of you on live, uh, for my Patreon members only. And it's being recorded after the presentation. You will get an email from the system. Uh, from the Crowdcast system with a link to recording, and it will be the same link, the same location, because the Crowdcast system uses the same URL for everything, your registration, uh, viewing live, and watching recording. And it's a little bit different from Zoom in that this is an event application um, that I tend to prefer. I'm allowed to control proceedings a little bit more than Zoom. There's less distractions. So the audio is one way only. You can hear me. I can't hear you. Your microphone is on mute. I can't see you. Um, it's one way only. So if you do have a question as we go through, click on the Ask a Question button. Hopefully you can see that at the bottom of your screen, and I'll do my best to answer your questions as I go through. Uh, with the recording, when the event is finished, just allow a little bit of time. It takes a few minutes just for the Crowdcast system to sort itself out, and then you can you can play it back as many times as you want to. I'll also pop it up on YouTube as an unlisted public, uh, sorry, private video for Patreon only, and an edited version. Although it will it will be uh, it won't be ad free. Will be available for the general public, but it, it will be an edited version. So remember to use the ask a question button if you've got any questions as we go through. Don't please don't put in chat. I'm I'm likely to miss it there. Um, sometimes with with uh, when we get lots of people on the on the call and people typing in welcome messages and so on, I I can miss some um, any genuine questions. So you're very welcome to paint along with me on this or just watch to sit back and watch me. Um, either make a mess of things or maybe do a half decent job, uh, then then you can do, do the uh, painting in your own time. And those of you on the relevant Patreon membership level or tier, you get to send me a photo of your painting and I will give you an individual critique, which will be in writing or as a short video, depending on what tier you're on. Um, more on the the specifics and the the, the uh, logistics of that um, at the end. Right. So, uh, as so, you I, I don't think I need to describe the interface any anymore. Um, you've seen chat. You can see what's going on here. We can see the subject, which I will reference some um, from time to time as we go through. And you've got the ask question button there as well. There is a source photo, big green button, source photo button. So if you did miss the source photo um, from the initial posting and invitation, then click on that green button. You can you can uh, download it to your local device as well. 
All right. Uh, so the subject for this demo is the scene. This is going to be called Fountain in the Park, and it's central Madrid, Plaza or Plaza. I'm not sure if it's Plaza or Plaza de Oriente. And it's a small sort of semi-circular park, a very pretty formal garden just outside the, um, just next to the Royal Palace in central Madrid. So what we're seeing here is this, a lot of geometric shapes really, in the foreground, we've got this semicircular fountain, a pool with the fountain coming down the right hand side. Lots of spray to contend with there. Then as we go further in, in towards the background, we've got lots of people, loads of people there. I'm not going to be doing all those people. I'm not going to copy those people, but I will have some standing figures. Some people sat down on the uh, the side of the pool and, and some of those figures they're creating some shadows as well going a little bit further away we've got some strong geometric shapes of these clipped hedges here very formal uh, almost squares and rectangles some of them got a slight sort of semi-circular curved top to them but a little bit of light hitting the top light is is almost coming towards us from the right hand side so it's sort of coming from this sort of direction there now around the outside of this park there's this sort of semi-circular buildings with a, a few rooftops uh, catching the sunlight at the top rows of windows so fairly simple um, background buildings slight a slight sort of curve to them there are some more buildings over there between the buildings and these these clipped hedges are some trees that are just sort of piercing the sky and then a very simple sky there's not much to that sky a very small slither of sky there right let me describe the my materials to you so i've got watercolor paper here saunders waterford cold press 300 grams or 140 pounds Colours I'm using as per normal from previous demos. Nothing has really changed. Neutral tint. The, these are colours. These are colours predominantly from a UK manuf manufacturer called Jackman's Art Materials. Um, more information in the notes of this video. But we've got neutral tint there. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, cobalt green. Sorry, cobalt turquoise. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, light red, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, and lavender. Three mixing wells here. My my water container is over there on the right hand side, and I've got a sponge over there as well. Brushes. I'm going to be using a medium sized mop brush to start off with, covering most of the uh, the scene with a, a fairly large mop brush that's got still got a fairly good edge to it i, I do need to buy a new one uh, that's a, that's a, a raphael soft aqua brush by the way um a softer brush a pure squirrel mop brush from windsor and newton and um, more of a medium size this is a size four and then a size 12 synthetic round brush uh, but it's got quite a good point to it and a number four synthetic round brush to finish off with right so plan of approach with this now this photograph is, is quite dark there um, in the background but uh, I, I described the the main elements to you. So we've got thin sky, buildings, geometric shapes, light hitting the tops of these hedges, figures, shadows coming across from right to left, serving to connect these different shapes as well. Maybe quite a difficult 
thing to get right from a drawing at uh, the drawing stage is getting that curve right the the uh the wall of this pool and then it it widens as it comes down here and a little bit of a curved edge to it this side bit of a sharp edge that side a bit more of a curve that side and from a watercolor technique point of view trying to get the effect of that spray from the fountain well i might be using a little bit of white paint i'll, I'll describe the various um, techniques that you might want to use for that uh, when we get to that stage first step for me then is an outline drawing of the main objects so i'll spend about five ten minutes doing this something like that but before i start let me just see if there's any questions that you've got those that are on here live and question from Andrew just out of curiosity what's that cream colored blob with black dots in the middle of the big pan in your palette that one there Andrew is the enamel coming off my palette this palette is quite old I've got some white I've got some white spray enamel paint so um, when convenient I'm going to clean that off and I'm going to respray that but that's just the um yeah don't worry about it it's it's just the uh this thin layer of paint that's come off over the years so um hopefully that answers your question which I have been asked that very same question many times before I must get that sorted right 3b pencil and for me a very important thing is trying to think well where am i going to start drawing and getting the getting the horizon correct so i think that's the horizon line something like that a little bit above the central line okay and that's going to give us a little bit more opportunity to focus on the the pull here this curve pull i want to get that all in if i had that too low then I wouldn't have enough space for that, that curve pull. I'm going to start drawing the rooftops first and thinking about the curved nature of the, the roof. Now I'm just lightly getting in that main line up there of the curved building. And there's a few... levels to the rooftops up there there are some trees here we can really make up make up those trees and then there's a building that continues over on the right hand side just a little bit of a a thin slither of a, a building that we can see over there ignoring the windows for a moment coming down and these hedges well we don't need to copy exactly these geometric shapes of the of these clipped hedges but we want to try and just give the impression of all of these different sizes of shapes of those hedges and some are connecting some are in in front some are in front of each other some have curved tops to them as well I'll have a little bit of fun with some of those shapes now the base of those hedges they are generally a little bit wider than they are tall so let's get get in the base of those those hedges there something like that 
Now down to the far side of the pool. That's almost horizontal, very level. And then it just gradually, as we come over the left hand side, it gradually comes down and gets very tight on that bend and then kind of a sweeping curve down into the, down into the bottom right corner. So, I start about there. I want to start low enough so I've got space for a little, little bit of the park, a little bit of light beyond it. So, just do it fairly lightly first of all, and then this is the outside. the outside of the edge of the pool, and then coming down away like that. Now, the inside of that edge, very thin, of course, in the distance, And then it gets a little bit thicker. On the left hand side. And then maybe just a little bit wider as we come down to the bottom there. So That looks all right to me that there's the side of the wall. Something like that. Again, it gets a little bit deeper, a little bit taller as we come down towards us. The shadow is, I don't often draw the edge of the shadow, but that's going to be something like that. So this will be all in the shade there. The fountain. Now the fountain's got a, a couple of tiers. There's that one there. And it drips down into this bottom one and then drips down, comes over the edge. There's a few little sort of channels along the edge of that tier and it's dripping down into the into the pool and create some gentle sort of ripples um concentric circles out from that so the the top tier a little sort of half elliptical curve and then the lower level comes out like that almost like a like a sort of shallow cup reservoir and then we've got the water dripping down there water dripping down here uh, I don't know what's over to the right hand side. I think it's actually a semicircular pool here. It's not it's not circular. Um, and there's a sort of wall here. Right. Make sure that curve looks good. Or as good as you can get it. Might just darken up some of this, make some of these lines a bit thicker here just so you can see what's going on. We hit the side of that lower tier.
Right, people. We've got to have some people in here. And there's loads to choose from. I'm not going to, as I say, I'm not going to copy them. Um, but there are, this, that's quite a nice pose there. Mother and child or child's just taking a little bit of a tumble um, or, or playing around there. And um, we've got all sorts of different um, poses and people walking left to right, right to left. I'm, I'm going to, first of all, try and make a note of where the tops of the heads are. And they're all, they're all fairly level, all right? And they're using a reference point. They're almost halfway between the top and the bottom of those hedges. So around about there. So let's get in some figures it's fairly empty over on the left hand side we've got the fountain on the right we want to try and have some nice figures over there on the left hand side so let's get in some larger figures maybe so with figures i generally Start off, of course, with a head, a little bit of a hoop, and then draw the body, make a decision on the direction of where they're going. Maybe this one's going from right to left, this one's going from left to right. Perhaps we've got uh, some walking away from us. Now, as we come over to the right hand side, there are some seated figures and their heads are a little bit lower. They are, the tops of their heads are just above the, they're just above the bottom of the hedges. There's one there. And then let's just continue on with a few more standing figures. have different size of figures different spacing between the figures as well some of the figures will be well most of the figures will be fairly dark because we're we're looking into the light uh, but I, I will have a few a few of them with lighter clothing, just so that it gives us a little bit of contrast against the general, generally um, darker background there. All right. And again, I'm not going to do the shadows for those figures, but generally they are they, they are going from right to left. So And they will kind of connect with each other as well. All right. Now, the reflections of these trees will be 
something like if that's the horizon there'd be something like there that tree there will be there and then we've got reflections of the figures as well now just on this side on the inner wall i need to draw that in so that's that's this line here there's a little bit of a light a reflected light edge to that So starting from half the right, right on this left hand side, over to there. There's the shadow from that top. here like that good I think I'm nearly there um, back to this left hand side maybe just another another smaller figure over there so there's a bit of a bit of a balance there of figures but the larger figures on the left hand side to sort of balance out from a composition point of view the fountain and the all the reflections and things going on on the right hand side there are a few vertical objects there's some there's some tree trunks that are standing out in those trees there are some street lights there's a couple of street lights there's one here and there's one over here they might be nice to include something a little bit lighter against that darker background again yeah i think that's all right okay so that is my drawing done as i say the most difficult thing i think um it is the shape of that pull getting that curve right and then thinking about your plan with the people um, how many people you're going to have in and where they're going to be and but certainly try and get it getting a few seated figures there sat on the let's get another let's get another seated figure There and the lights hitting there, the lights hitting their right shoulders as well. So the next step for me is to start painting. Let me just see if there's any questions first of all. Don't think there is. Right, the plan of approach with the painting is I am going to cover most of my paper except for those areas I want to keep deliberately light or I want to to paint in a particular way so I'm gonna try and keep the the wall of the pool light a little bit of light around here and some of the figures but generally I'm covering I'm just basically trying to cover up the paper with some base with, with um, some base color the the sky and the ground here that will be the finished color so I need to get those particularly right so I'll start off with my my number four Raphael mop synthetic mop brush to be honest with you I could use 
my squirrel mop brush but just go with this one first of all and get in that sky well i'm just laying down a bit of clear water here and then to give the feeling of some of those clouds with some softer edges just now pick up a little bit of cobalt blue cerulean blue and then just drag that in try and create some soft edges down to the buildings and the rooftops. Now, change to a warmer color for the buildings here. This is just a base color. This will be the color of the light hitting some of those rooftops. So I'm going a bit too red, add in a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm just really covering up those buildings. And those buildings, some of them are orange, some of them are more cream, red as well. Maybe a little bit of olives and crimson in there. Down to where the hedges are now. And a little bit of base color for those hedges. bit of yellow, a little bit of blue. The foliage over here is a lot brighter now. A bit of painting around the top tier of the fountain and then come down Paint around some of these figures. And then down to the ground, which, which is fairly warm. All right, so a sort of pinkish warmish color, I think. I'm gonna choose a little bit of, just make sure I've got all the uh, yellow off this brush and then the green, a little bit of maybe a light red, little bit of alizarin crimson. 
and then painting over the lower parts of some of these figures. And then down to the top edge of the pool. Continue on down the left hand side. and get a, a nice edge around the left-hand side of the pool. That's why that, that uh, initial line that I did had to be as good as I can make it. And then down into that bottom left corner. Don't go too, don't go too bright. And it will dry a little bit lighter. And you could lift off just a little bit of this ground or add in some darker color just to introduce some variation in the strength of that because we've got different got different uh, variations there's a little lighter patch there a little bit darker there a little bit darker there darker here where the materials are, where the materials are just subtly changing on um, on the surface. Right uh, next, this pool. I want to cover. I want to think about the base color for the pool, which is going to be that sky color. That color is, is darker than the sky. To me, it looks like a little bit like a lavender, I think, a little bit. So cover all of this um, pool with a, a darker mixture. A darker mixture than the sky, a darker, a darker value than the sky. Again, I'm just wiping off all of my previous red color. And then, now that lavender is just a little bit too dull. I can just pick up some of the blue. Cover all of this pool with this base color. We're going to go in darker with the, the reflections and the little 
ripples hard edge up to the side of the pool There we go. So it is drying a little bit lighter now. So I've left out those, that's where the darker trees are gonna be. There's that little sort of triangular slice of a building we can see, but I've just basically covered that with that light blue wash. So that's step one from the painting phase done, covering up most of the page, most of the paper with that paint. Just let that dry now. Um, certainly let it dry over in the top part of this area because I want to, my next step is to go in with the hedges. Do the hedges next, get in a little bit of light, on the top edge of those hedges and then do the background. I could go the other way. I could have done the background buildings first, then paint around the, the hedges and then paint the hedges coming darker to this, coming darker to that, uh, the bottom of the hedges there, painting around some of those figures. So I could do it that way around. I'm gonna do it um, hedges first. Brush wise, let's have a smaller brush for a little bit more control. Um, I'll go with my number 12 synthetic mop. Right, we just check that the surface is fairly dry. I can still see the outline edges of some of those. Uh, the the, uh, the shape of those hedges as well. Uh, I just checked for any questions. Nope. Okay. Well, I assume you're all doing all right. And you've got no questions. Right. Mix up a green color. So cadmium yellow, a little bit of ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow. And just painting the top edge of some of these edges, shapes. and then pick up something darker. So a bit more altering blue, perhaps a little bit of Viridian green, and then Going up to the that lighter area and go dark towards the bottom.
So down to the base of these hedges, paint carefully, as carefully as I can around these figures. It's important to have a good edge on your brush as well for a little bit of careful painting around some of these shapes, the tops of the figures. And then over on the right hand side, it looks like there's some lower hedges coming in closer to the pool. So I've just done a few horizontal marks there. And then down to the top of tier number one. All right, just strengthen up some of these darker areas. There we are. Now, background building. So the background buildings, we're going to come down to the tops of those hedges. Uh, the brush I'm going to use for this, because I've got a slightly larger, I think I'll go to my squirrel mop brush for this and the color of these background buildings fairly warm but getting a little bit darker as we come down to the tops of the hedges all right now i don't want to go too dark because a darker value will be these trees between the buildings and the hedges so not too dark Let's pick up a bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of ultra blue, perhaps a little bit of 
Amazon Crimson, a bit of cadmium red. And So this is this uh, a little bit of a a wall that's facing us. Then there's so there's roof, wall, roof, and then the wall again. The main wall here, this tallest wall. Come down to the the uh, tops of those edges, but go a little bit darker. So I'm going to use a stronger ultra blue, burnt sienna, perhaps a little bit of neutral tint. Nearly there, trying to get in that jagged top edge. Doesn't matter if it bleeds a little bit. And then over on the right hand side, there's some sort of a purplish tree. And it's creating some nice contrast with the top tier of the fountain. There. Now, back to these rooftops, just to get in some of the impression of the tiled rooftops. Just a few little lines here. And then immediately above the, on the top of the roof, there are some 
chimneys and objects. Right. Okay, so let's just continue with the background. These trees, the building on the right hand side, which is quite blue. Stick with my small synthetic brush. And connecting with the foliage just below that. So hedges medium-sized trees, background building. And then these two trees here, well, there's some thinner ones in the middle, but those two trees stick with my small synthetic brush. And something dark so viridian green burnt sienna a little bit of ultramarine blue quite thick and not too much water on my brush now almost dry brush marks to get the impression of the the foliage that it's not too thick the canopy here we can just about see oh, there's too much water on that we can just about see the sky piercing through some of the uh, some of the branches fridging green uh, a brown a little bit of blue And with this tree, I need to make it a little bit denser in the middle of the tree into the base, but maybe go a little bit darker. In the middle and at the bottom. There's another dark tree there.
Okay. Right, next. Let's get in some of these figures. I'll just check and see if anybody's got any questions. No, I don't think you've got any questions. Right, figures then. I'll stick with my small synthetic brush and get in some flesh color first of all. Bit of light red or red or bit of cadmium orange, something like that. Now not have all the figures coming towards me. Some are side to side walking away um, let, let's have maybe this figure here um, this one might be walking towards us a little bit more like red um, maybe Maybe this one. And this one. And this one. No clothing. Generally darker, but I will have some of them with some lighter tops, maybe just to give a little bit of contrast with the with generally the darker background. So don't need to worry too much about the color here, but something dark. And a little bit of blue. Maybe that person's pushing a buggy or something like that. Connect with this figure. So don't don't spend a lot of time with the legs. It just can draw a little bit too much attention to legs. I'm just closing up some of these gaps here on that background hedge. It's just a little bit too many too many gaps. Um, this figure here, this figure here. Uh, And then next to that one, trying to keep the poses a little bit different, each one. Uh, this one will be, have a, have a lighter top. And 
then we've got some seated figures on the side of the pool. So this person here um, sat down, maybe looking a little bit over to the left. And standing figure a bit further away. So you can see I'm just, as I'm going over, I'm just alternating the colors a little bit just to add a bit of variety to these figures so they're not all too monotonous and the same dark color. Um, two figures fairly close to each other there. Then maybe some more, Di didn't draw these in, but let me just get in a few more distant figures there. Right, shadows, shadows. They're almost horizontal, just tilting a little bit down to the left and a warmish shadow. So let me just mix up, keep the same brush, mix up a altering blue and a little bit of Alice and Crimson. It's always a good shadow mix, starting from the left hand side here. So, generally, that sort of direction. Oh, I didn't get in this figure's clothing. Let's say this guy's got. Got some shorts on and shadow. Now the, bear in mind the sun, let's say the sun is that sort of angle. So sun hits the head and Connecting with the, from the head, connecting to the figure. There we are. So hopefully we're just starting to get the feeling of the light coming into the scene and light hitting these figures. Maybe this person's got a bag. There's a shoulder strap there. Right, now down to this pool. So we've got these, let's just plan our approach here. So 
we've got the reflection of those trees. Now, I think my photograph, uh, the, uh, the actual color might be a little bit too bright, that green there, but we've got those two trees reflected some, a, a little bit of rippling as it's coming out from where, where the water's coming off that fountain into the pool, a few little ripples coming out from that. Maybe tighter little ripples in there, a um, little bit wider apart as we come to the outside of the pool. But we've got to try and got to try and suggest a little bit of movement in there, and also the reflection of some of these figures as well, which we can just about see. There's some um, red red clothed figures there. You can see the red coming into those reflections. Right, decision on what brush for this. Let's go with, let's go with my mop brush. Again, my squirrel mop brush. And we're starting from the edge of the, the, the actual um, fall of the water there. Let's just pick up generally um, a darker green color. So I've got some green there. And if I don't have enough, a nice green, I think a dark green. That Viridian green. A little bit of burnt sienna tiny bit of ultramarine blue I think my viridian green here has dried up just a little bit too much so I'm trying to eke out as much of that color as I can um, yeah that's better So, not too much paint on the brush. Now, I've got the the spray coming down from the fountain there, and then Coming out, I want to try and start to suggest some of these little Little ripples of water. So smaller ripples there, closer together, wide as we come outside. Now let's work over to the left, a bit more green.
Now, the reflection of that tree will be around about here. And then over to the next tree reflection, that one there. There we are. And while that's still damp, drop in a little bit of darker, just picking up some neutral tint. Now something dark off your palette and create the reflections of those seated figures. There. Okay. Next. Let's get in the shadow here. Um, let's stick with, let's stick with, I'll go to my number 12 brush and the shadow on the left hand side of the pool that's fairly warm and that looks like it's cool to me so warmer color cooler color warmer color for the wall And then cooler colour, bit of cobalt blue this time, a little bit of cobalt blue. For the shadow going across the ground, connect the two up, maybe just create a little bit of a a little bit of a soft edge so i'm using a small brush here with that's been dampened just a little bit and just soften up to soften up that edge tiny bit of water pick up some water, take off most of the water off that brush so it's not too wet. And I'm just teasing out that edge there. Little bit of darkness now um, on the inside wall, down to the water's edge where we've got a little bit of a reflection.
these seated figures, their shadow is going to it's going to come over that wall. So up to my pencil line. There. Right. Fountain. <laughs> Leave the most difficult thing till the end. Right. How to get the effect of these little droplets of water coming down. Well, we've got, starting from the top, we've got a fairly dark colour there, the underneath of the top tier. And then there's this water coming down. I could use some white, could use some white paint for that on a fairly so, on top of a fairly solid base, the, the darker background. Um, I could maybe... just use some dry brush marks to starting from the base use some dry brush marks and then Go up a little bit more solid for the underneath of that top tier there. Um, and then coming down to the lower tier. Starting with the the lip of that tear, and there's these little sort of ornate sort of walls to that. that side. And thinking about perspective, they're almost horizontal there, but then they come round and they're almost vertical here. Just Adding just a few little few little dots a bit darker. On the right hand side. Now, bottom of the lower tier, something dark. Let's paint over this, the uh, basin of that, um, lower tier. We've got the shadow of that lower tier.
Okay. I'll just let that dry a little bit before I go in with some white paint as an alternative. An alternative to that that technique there. Uh, back to the buildings. Now that roof, these roofs are a little bit too light. So I'm just going to glaze over those a bit. Soft brush for this. Very soft brush. So I don't want to damage the don't want to damage the marks I've made already. And something not too dark. a little bit better and then the same for the lower one just glaze over it a little bit especially I think on this side because where the sun's coming from it's going to hit that left hand side a little bit more There we go. Now, some windows and just a few little architectural details in there. Um, small synthetic brush for this. Just a few windows, not every window. Something dark, not black. Don't want to go too dark. Um, bit of blue in there. small brush and then just the hint of a few windows here and there. Need a bit more water on that. Um, as I say, just a few windows to give the impression. And I didn't draw these in, so I'm sort of trying to guess where they will be. Maybe some windows a little bit lower down. Um, there needs to be a few, a few more lines along this building just to just to create a bit more create a bit more interest perhaps a, a darker a darker line just underneath the edge of the roof there and there may be A line there, perhaps we could just have a few verticals. And there's a few verticals with these tree trunks here. Let's get a, get a few of those in. Um,
can't resist adding in more people. <laughs> Got to know when to stop. There's a sort of seat over here. Um, now, along the top edge of the fountain, there are just a few faint Just a few little faint lines where we've got the little sort of gaps between the blocks. make that into some sort of uh, what they call a fedora hat or something like that uh, for that figure um, I think I'm nearly ready for some white paint just to add a few more sparkles to that water To strengthen up that tear a bit. There's just another little edge to some slabs. There and a few more little gaps between those. Slabs. A few little dots on the surface just to give the impression of some grit or debris. Little cobblestones, some very pretty little, um, like a mosaic there, maybe just sort of inlaid 
pebbles or something like that in there. Right, let's get out some white paint. Uh, make sure my brush is very dry. Um, let's find another brush. Here we are. Another synthetic brush. Just make sure it's a little bit damp and not dirty because I'm going to dip this into my dip this into my white paint. I don't want to dirty this paint up. So with the white paint, little bits of highlights on some of the figures, just a little bit, not too much, because I do have some already. And then a few little sparkles for the water just to bring it to life a little bit. All right. So this is white gouache. Any white will do to be honest with you. So starting from the left hand side pick up on a few of these figures And then these seated figures here, a bit more, bit more light on the right hand side. That's where the, that's that light is. And some in the distance, this one here. All right, a little bit of sparkle on the water. And just dry brush marks with the white paint. Starting from the top, just quickly drag it down. If you've got rough paper, then that's best because it's it's going to just drag along the top of the texture of the paper. Now there's a little bit of reflection in the water of the top tier. There's a few little leaves and things floating around in the water.
So I think I'm nearly done. Perhaps some of these poles are catching a little bit of light on the left. Had a few figures in there, didn't I? So just just add in just a few little bits of paint there, just to give the impression of some, some distant groups of figures. And there you are. I think I'm done. So hope you enjoyed that and uh, hope to um, hear from you, those that uh, are on the, the relevant um, uh, tier to get a, a critique from me. So I will be posting, um, make another posting on Patreon just to give you a little bit more information for those of you that are new to this on how to email me a photo of your your painting um also good luck if, if you're going to be uh, painting this on in your own time um so watch out for a posting on patreon on how to submit the photo to me by email my email address is timothy at gmail.com i think i've done all february's so far but give me a shout if I've left you out for any reason, uh, I do the critiques. I do do them in the order I get them. So if you send in your, your painting in about two or three weeks time, you know, it's, it, I may have a backlog of, of people to do. So uh, please be patient. I, I normally do acknowledge uh, when I, I'm pretty sure I do acknowledge when someone emails me, their their painting i do just send out a little acknowledgement just to say that's in the queue and thanks for your thanks for sending me your painting and i'll i'll attend to it um shortly but so but please be patient so well thanks very much i'll draw this event to the close thanks very much for those of you listening live i think there's about 28 people still on the call um thanks very much uh, um good night or good morning or whatever time zone you're in uh, i think ravi gets i think ravi gets the prize he's in saigon three at three a.m in the morning um okay there's some questions thanks very much bob right uh ravi tim hi tim how about choosing some bright red yellow green clothes for some of the figures not sure if you have any advice these look very british shades um yeah bar means go for that there's some blues in there reds there's a little bit of a green there um it's summer clothing so some people be wearing shorts and things so um maybe a little bit more flesh color blue jeans there yeah introduce some color now if you have gone a little bit too dark you could go over the top of them with some thicker body color so let me just get out my um let's pick up let's pick a bit of lavender a light color a little bit more water And let's pick up on this figure here. So maybe this one. Is going to have a bit of a, a lavender top. Use my finger just to create a bit of a softer edge. Do you see? So yes, by all means, 
Let's do the same now. It's a very good question, Ravi. Bit of cadmium red. Um, a red figure, a red figure. Maybe this one here. A red top. All right. There we are. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? So they're not too boring and monotonous and uh, and all dark. I did try it with um with a lighter colour. Perhaps with some of them I could. That, that one there, it's got a lot of pencil marks on it. So I could just rub those out and that will instantly give us a little bit of brightness, almost like a, a bit of a focal point there. Right. Thanks, Ravi. Uh, brilliant question as always. And Andrew, what would you say is the center of interest in this scene? Gosh, well, it could be a figure. I mean, go back to the photo. I think this couple here, that might be a, a focal interest. They're, they're all connected, those figures. That, that could be, but they're just a little bit too much on the left. I think if you've got some space, something like that, have them more on the right. So it could be a figure. It could be the, the fountain there. Or I might argue why, why, I mean, it's all interesting. Maybe you have multiple areas of interest. Uh, so... Generally, I generally think in a scene like this, it's, it's going to be one of those figures. So maybe make a dominant figure, maybe have a figure with some brighter clothing or very dark clothing against a, a lighter background. Right. Thanks very much, Andrew. And Barb, would you ever use a white crayon or clear wax to repel the paint for the fountain spray? I'm toying with the idea of trying that. Yes, you could. I'm not so sure about wax. Um, maybe you could use some masking fluid. You know, the rubber stuff is it called? Is it frisket or something like that in the States? Um, so you could use something like that over there. Uh, I've used two techniques, dry brush and a little bit of white paint. But yes, by all means, do a little bit of planning and thinking about dropping in um some particularly in this these these more solid lighter areas a little bit of um well you i say you you could use some white crane over there or that clear wax to repel the water or or masking fluid okay brilliant idea i think it's whatever you're used to all right so uh have a little bit of fun with that thanks very much bob Right. Uh, OK, I don't think there's any more questions. I'll, as I say, watch out for posting on Patreon with my I'll, I'll take a photo of this uh, later on in the morning. Um, it's 10 to 10 here, UK time um, in the morning. I will uh, put a proper posting of the finished item up on Patreon with a link to the video again and a YouTube if you prefer to watch it in the YouTube format, I'll create a, a private video, no ads, um, just for just for us all to share. If you want, to, if you prefer the YouTube format, but thanks very much. And those of you on a on a, on the relevant tier, I look forward to seeing your paintings. And even if you're not on a tier that uh, where you get a critique, pop it up on the community tab. Let's all have a look at it, um, as well as if you're on a tier sending off to me by email as well so thanks very much everyone stay safe and i'll catch up with you on the next one thanks very much bye-bye